Holy wow. jeez. Um, I think she needs some new security. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just a friend of the family and I flick my cigarette butts on the floor. Come off it, man. <laughs> I mean, my husband smokes and I don't let him flick his cigarette butts on the floor. So, you really think I'm going to let a friend of the family do the same thing? Hell no. If I were to try and flick my butts all over the floor... <laughs> sorry. <coughs> cigarette butts all over the floor... <laughs> Um, there'd be a guy shoving his face in. I'm what, wrong thing. Sorry, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, if I were to flick my cigarette ends, <laughs> the bits that you don't smoke, yeah, the cottony part on the floor, I would be murdered by my own mother, who spent 18 hours pushing me out of her. So yeah, I'm not gonna let some random stranger come into the house and do it. Exactly. Not to mention, you know, the fact that we have small children. Well, I don't anymore because she's now 10. But, you know, you have small children and they would probably go, mm, this looks like a good idea. Let's chew on this. Yes. So. <laughs> and for the record, I do not have small children. I have a small child. Well, <coughs> <meh. laughs> <laughs> you Belinda can... seeing double. <laughs> yeah, it was all, all the lemonade that I had. You know. <laughs> And the Snickers bar. No, oh, that's the problem. Except Damn there's it. no Snickers in the house. <gasps> that's because you ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Alrighty, next. <sighs> Do you have a problem with D's, by the way? <laughs> I don't think so. Because you said intruder. Maybe I've got a speech impediment. I don't know. I don't know if I have a speech impediment. <laughs> I never noted it. No one ever pointed it out before. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> Just our passengers were first to fly. Respect my authority. I could do that. I could read the whole article like that. Anyway. <sighs> Jetstar offers passengers $100 compensation for flying with a dead man. <laughs> Jetstar passengers were forced to fly with the corpse of a man have been offered $100 in travel vouchers as compensation. Robert Rippingale, I wonder if he's in relation to the woman that should have blown one right in his face. Sorry. <laughs> 31 died just 90 minutes into the one... One. Wow. I wonder exactly how I would have said that if I'd let my brain keep going. 11 hour flight from Singapore to Auckland. Yes. His girlfriend, Vanessa... <laughs> <laughs> Watch as his lips turn purple and his eyes rolled around his face. Well, there's his problem. <laughs> you know you're supposed to keep your eyes in your face. <laughs> keep your... Don't they say the rules? Keep your hands and feet and eyes inside the vehicle at all times. <laughs> Death Star crew members removed Mr. Rippingale's body into a curtained crew rest area where Mrs. Peaky Freaky cool, sat with his body for nine hours. Ugh. The coroner has yet to determine whether Mr. Rippingdale died from choking. His family told the New Zealand Herald he had a pre-existing heart condition. The police told us he choked on the food on his flight, but he had a heart problem, so we think it might have been that. <laughs> he was born with a hole in his heart and had that fixed when he was six. Everyone's born with a hole in their heart, you douchebag. Sorry. <laughs> And he's had the valves done a couple of times since then. We're just waiting for answers now. The airline contacted, passen wait, contacted passengers who were sitting near Mr. Rippingale to thank them for their patience during what would have been an upsetting situation. They were offered a discount on future travel, a small acknowledgement, acknowledgement of this, a Jetstar spokesperson said. Hamilton City Councilor Ewan Wilson, a former pilot Kiwi Air founder, watched in horror as Mr. Rippingale's body was carried away. I could see a doctor doing CPR for around 10 minutes, and then I just heard the scream from the partner of the man. He told stuff.co.nz. 
<laughs> Mr. Wilson said passengers were visibly shaken and very shocked, especially since some were served their in-flight meal straight <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Shut up, phone. <laughs> okay, no one's calling. Sorry. He had... He said he wished Jetstar had used the money it paid out in refunds to turn the plane around. I agree. They should have turned the plane around. Yeah, I suppose. But, uh... What the hell? Uh, Sorry. I don't, I don't know. I mean... Oh, I don't know. You know, it sucks for all the people on board, and it really sucks for him. And, like, totally sucks for his partner. But, you know, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Worst timing ever, dude. At least, hey, maybe he saw what the in-flight movie was going to be. Maybe it was going to be the Spice Girls movie. Or Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> <laughs> go on, say the line. That were snuggled in by some man with them in his pants. Seven of them. And two tortoises. And then some guy came along <laughs> and bit one. <laughs> Twice. We won't say we won't say which one, but he bit it twice. <laughs> and then there was some other guy that came in, and while his partner was like, "Oh my God, you're dead," he rubbed his face all over her bottom. So you know, it all comes back around full circle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, oh, cool. I get this one, and we fit it just Yay! in. Okay. I was on Facebook as I usually am during the day, and this story came up from the 7pm project which was like the bestest news program ever on channel 10 on at 7 o'clock every weekday night in Australia yeah, on channel 10 yes okay and then this story came up like two seconds before we were supposed to pre-record and it says Gumby attempts to rob 7-Eleven in San Diego fails September 7. San Diego police said an individual in a Gumby costume attempted to rob Rancho Pasa... What the hell? Penasquastos 7-Eleven <laughs> on Monday, September 7th at 12.30am. Store surveillance footage shows Gumby entering the 7-Eleven with his hands raised above his head along with another man described as a white male, somewhere between the ages of 18 and 22 years old, standing between... 5'6 and 5'8 tall. Gumby walked sure. up to the cashier and said to the clerk, This is a robbery, San Diego Police Detective Gary Henson said. The clerk thought it was a joke and told Gumby that he had to go back to cleaning. Gumby insisted that the robbery was a, was real and proceeded to reach into his Gumby-like pockets as he were looking for a weapon, of which he never produced. Gumby... Now, the Gumby costume impeded his efforts to reach into his pockets and after fumbling around for several minutes, Gumby gave up his efforts and walked out of the store after <laughs> dropping 26 cents out of his pockets. Gumby's accomplice had already left, honking the horn at him. The clerk originally thought it was some sort of prank, reporting it later at 6am when the 7-Eleven manager came in. The costume chosen in the attempted robbery, Gumby, was originally the lead character in a television series also named Gumby, which ran from 1955 to 1989. Wow. Holy dooly. And produced 233 episodes. The show was created by Arthur Art Clokey and his wife, both of whom created the character during his time at a student of University of South Carolina. Oh, during his time as a student of University of South Carolina, Cloakey passed away in 2010 at the age of 88. Holy dooly. A $1,000 reward is being offered for information leading to Gumby's arrest. Police say both men could face felony charges of attempted robbery if apprehended. If you have any tips, they can be given anonymously at www.sdcrimestoppers.com. So, yes... That's what happens when your creator dies. You become a robber and you leave 26 cents at the 7-Eleven with the epic fail robbery. <laughs> so guess what, Panda News? We win! Yay! Yes! We got it for you. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. But I bet they'll pick it up because that's just gold. <laughs> it's amazing. That story needs to be told over and over and over and over again. 
Okay, well, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, I reckon I've watched enough Bones <laughs> and enough Castle and, you know, maybe one or two episodes of NCIS. I reckon I could figure out who this Gumby guy is. Because, you know, he would have probably had to rent the costume. So you just go around to, like, the costume rental places and go, have you rented any Gumby costumes lately? And that's probably going to be your guy. 